200 pounds casing pressure and that caused a little bit of pressure. Well he's pumping in the well and he's pounding the fluid and he's tearing up his pumping unit and he needs a pump off controller on it. But he's still got 250 pounds of back pressure down at the bottom of the well. And he's got only got 500 driving it. So when you look right here, Vogel says that if you're producing is half of your static, then you're getting 70% of the maximum production. So even though he's pounding fluid, you got a pump off controller cycling on and off, he's getting 70% of what the well will give up. My job when I walk up to a well is I want the producing bottom of pressure to be less than 10% of what's out in the reservoir. And so I need to know both those numbers. Generally, you don't know the reservoir pressure unless when some well goes down, you go to the trouble that it's down for a couple of days, just go shoot it before you start it back up and calculate the pressure at the bottom of the well. And that's kind of, it's not a free bottom of pressure, but it's pretty cheap. Here are other ways to do it, but they're not used much because they're so daggum expensive. Fluid level shocks are cheap. You could have a gauge in a well and, and ESP, a lot of ESP pumps put gauges in them now, and they're better than they used to be. Uh, you could have a, you could pull out the rods, you've got rods in there, or if it's a gas well, just run a wire line bomb in there. Or you could have a tube. It's about like a straw that goes from the surface down to the bottom, and you put gas into it and let gas leak into the tube a little bit. Whatever pressure you read here, you could calibrate the, meet the pressure gauge up at the top into whatever pressure you have there. And then right below it, like on an airspeed indicator on an airplane, you can have indicated airspeed or you can have true airspeed. Air, true airspeed, right below whatever the pressure is, you could have what the pressure is down, to, which will be a little bit more because you got the height of that gas, you could have the pressure down at the reservoir. And you just walk up and see that one. All these are really wonderful and nice. They're just not on the well that you that you got a problem with. How do you get a bottom hole pressure with a fluid level instrument? Bottom hole pressure is equal to the surface pressure plus the gas column pressure plus the pressure due to these liquids down here, whatever they are. The weight of the gas column can be approximated by taking one-fourth of the casing pressure divided by 100 and the gas column length divided by 100. So if you had a casing pressure of 100 pounds, you divide that by 100, that'd make that number one. And if you had a length, a gas column length of 8,000 feet, that would make this number 80. So four divided into 80, the, bottom, the gas column pressure is about 20 pounds. You can figure it in your head. Fluid level instruments have been around a long time. A fellow in the 30s out in California named C.P. Walker did some absolutely brilliant work back then and we're, we're you know, just in the last few years, we've still been verifying what he did a long time ago and trying to fine tune it. But he did an awful good, good job. And what he patented was shooting the fluid level in a well. And he hooked a gun up here and generated a pulse with either anything to create a pulse. You know, you could release some more gas into the well. You could shoot a blank shell off. Ga hydrocarbon gas will not explode unless you put oxygen with it. So as long as you have the sealed system up here and the pressure is greater than atmospheric pressure, it can explode. So you can shoot a shell in there and it's no problem. That pulse goes down the well, reflects back off of any change in area. If it sees a tubing collar, if it sees a casing leak, if it sees a liner, tubing anchor, any of this stuff we've looked at down hole, it'll, it'll show up on your chart on the reflection. You know, you might, you might put it on a chart or you might digitize it. But here's the, what we normally think of you have a gun up here, and lately, because they're so cheap to operate, you have a gas gun, you put a little bit of gas in it, CO2, very safe gas, and release it into the well. That pulse travels down the well, and every time it goes past any change in area, it reflects back to the surface. 
And so if you have a little anomaly down here, paraffin or a liner or a hole in the casing, any sort of anomaly, it'll send back some signal. And over here, when you record it on the instrument, just bango, there's a collar, there's another collar, there's a collar, there's a collar. The older instruments, well, there was a good instrument named the Sonolog that was dual channel like this. The Sonolog, and they, they came out in like the 40s, late 40s or 50s. Um, they would record the sharp collars on one side, and then they had an amplifier in there that amplified the type of signal that comes back from the liquid level. Your cheaper instruments, like the echo meter, we just recorded this one side, and if the fluid level comes along, you'll see it as long as you can see a little bitty collar. But then when the collars died out, we'd just flip it down. That way we got by with just one recording one channel. And you're cheap. When you buy a TV set, you buy it with one channel up there. You don't buy 40 or 50 channels. You can switch around from one to another, but you just switch to the one you want to watch. Today, the modern, the, the instrument that we have is a dual channel like that. Static and producing bottom hole pressures can be determined from acoustic liquid level surveys. Again, the bottom hole pressure is the sum of the casing pressure, gas column pressure, and pressure due to the fluids. What is the distrib distribution of fluids within a well? In a type A well, you shoot the fluid level, and he's got a pump off controller on it. It keeps the liquid right down there at the pump, and it's always down there. And so it doesn't make any difference if you got five or 10 feet of liquid down there with gas bubbling up to it or not. It, uh, you know, you, there's no back pressure being caused on the formation by this liquid. Another type of well is you're pumping the well, but you're not getting all the liquid out of it. It's a doesn't have much gas in the reservoir, and it's a solid liquid column. And you're not producing any gas out of the casing annulus at the top. The third type, and this is probably the most common type that you'd be shooting, is a well that has some liquid in it. And when gas comes in, the pump is terrible at producing gas. And Tony will be talking on gas separators, trying to keep gas out of these pumps that we've been talking about and this gas comes in, we try to keep it out of the downhole pump, and it bubbles up through this liquid and comes out at the top. When it does, it aerates the column. This type, it's easy to get the bottom hole pressure. It's the casing pressure, a little bit of gas column pressure, practically no liquid above it, that's it. Just real simple. <clears throat> this one, we got, uh, there's no gas being made out of it, produced out of the casing.